We're here tonight to celebrate the career of Peter Woodman after more than a century. <laughs> 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 Third of a century at the Constitution. Now, look, I've got a revelation to make now. I have actually known uh, Peter since he was 11. <laughs> uh, just to clarify that, uh, he was actually 30 years old when we first met him. I am, of course, referring to his emotional <laughs> He's matured an awful lot since then. I would say that Peter's now almost 13. <laughs> and you know, such boyish enthusiasm is what, is what has made him such a wonderful friend and such a tremendous reporter. Whatever the circumstances, Peter will tackle the challenges with gusto, determined to get the most out of life. The word that springs to mind is rattling. <laughs> Peter, Peter speaks of rattling good themes, of rattling good stories, and of rattling good matches. And yet, he has not himself been rattled by some of the extraordinary circumstances that he has found himself in during his career. For example, Peter was actually shot uh, while in the service of the press association. He was blasted by a shotgun on a terrible night of rioting uh, on Broadwater, Broadwater Farm. I'm sure we can all remember that night. I think I'm right in saying that uh, he still has some of the pellets embedded uh, in various bits of his anatomy. Uh, just a word of advice. Do not ask him to show you where. <laughs> now, for many years, the police hunted locals for the crime, although I always wondered if the PA night subs had <laughs> To be honest, they were a tricky bunch. <laughs> anyway, the following day, Peter was in a hospital bed wearing one of those skimpy hospital gowns, as I understand it, when the Home Secretary, Douglas Hurd, arrived to inspect and comfort the casualty. <laughs> I believe that Peter was actually relieving himself <laughs> in a handy receptacle that stood by the bed when Mr. Hurd arrived. <laughs> Full. <laughs> he rapidly picked up a uh, pen and paper and interviewed the politician. Now, these days politicians see some dreadful sights <laughs> during uh, these troubled times we live in, but it must have tested his mettle to be interviewed by Peter, who was clutching a pen in one hand. <laughs> holding together a hospital gown with the other to preserve what little dignity. <laughs> now, it's Peter's, Peter's brilliant coverage of the Herald of Free Enterprise disaster that led to him getting the transport correspondence job, and he has done the job with distinction ever since, and he has done it with single-minded determination. Well, single-minded determination apart from when there is a football tournament on or, or when Wimbledon fortnight is uh, taking place or when cricket is being played anywhere on the face of the globe and it's at those moments it is at those moments it's fair to say that 11 year old Woodman Minor can be can be momentarily distracted fortunately there has been what I call Radio Woodman uh, to keep everyone informed on developments, however obscure, uh, which is obviously much appreciated by colleagues trying to write breaking news. Uh, and as rattling as rattling the matches are played, Pete has deployed his brilliant uh, talent for mimicry. John Motsin, Pathé Newsreel reporters, and Richie Benner. 
made frequent guest appearances on Radio Woman. And, and when tennis is on, Dan Maskell appears Lazarus like to explain what I say. Perhaps you like to just say, Bless it. My son, used to, my son used to love going to watch Tottenham Hotspur with Peter. It was like going with a brainy older brother. And he was amazed by Pete's encyclopedic knowledge of football. There was one occasion when Peter picked up an official history of Spurs, looked at the record section and declared, well, they've got that wrong. <laughs> and they had. <laughs> I mean, just to prove that point, Let's try a live experiment. <laughs> uh, I was born in 1954. Who won the cup final uh, back here? Uh, that was uh, West Bromwich Albion. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to tell us about the uh, uh, 3-2 against Preston North End. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Anything else? Uh, Tom Finney played when he did when he one of the few years there was no injury to any player, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of you can verify. <laughs> I think yeah, most of you can verify that that's right. Let's go ahead a couple of years to 1956. Who won the FA Cup that year? Uh, that was the Bertrandman Broken Neck final, where uh, Manchester City uh, beat Birmingham City 3 1. And Trampman, the former prisoner of war, suffered a broken neck. Which well, it's a faint recollection. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I see, I see young Woodman swatting up those facts <laughs> from a football annual under the blankets by the light of a torch after light sound. Last week. Well, actually, that's actually it's funny because I spoke. <laughs> We actually had a conversation a few weeks ago about it. He said, he said, no, he said, he said, I was lying in bed. Just trying to remember the FA Cup uh, final results from the 1970s. And I thought, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that, uh, that's, uh, that's enough teasing. Let's just talk about what a great reporter Peter uh, is. And he's not confined himself to transport. He has wanted to be involved in all of the big stories of the last three decades. For the millennium, he more or less unilaterally appointed himself millennium correspondent, and he was inside the dome at midnight when the new century and millennium uh, arrived. Actually, in a rash fit of generosity, I promised that he could take next millennium eve as a day <laughs> off. <laughs> which is probably one of the few pledges that I made as editor that I will be able to keep. And that story proved that Peter is actually a brilliant uh, reflective writer. For the millennium, he wrote a ten-part history of the 20th century that was used by many of PA's customers. And it wasn't just a recital of the facts. With a few <coughs> sentences, he was able to capture uh, the spirit of those tempestuous decades. Um, when the royal wedding took place, Peter was inside Westminster Abbey writing a delightful colour piece with the insight, confidence and maturity that comes from a lifetime of reporting. I mean, think about it, the royal wedding had little to do with transport, well, obviously, apart from the fact that Kate's dress had a train, but, <laughs> Pete, but Pete knew exactly uh, what was needed. We were talking of cricket uh, earlier. Peter still plays vigorously for his team and delights in showing his bruises or describing them, if not immediately accessible. But, but tonight, his innings for PA comes to an end. He has scored a huge number of runs for us and played some brilliant shots. And although he is retiring, on this occasion, I think we can state that he is definitely not out. I fancy that as a small boy, and now a real small boy, Pete read that famous poem, Vitae Lampada, that uses cricket as a metaphor for the way that we live life. It starts with the lines, there's a breathless hush in the close tonight. 
tend to make a match to win. And it includes the famous line, play up, play up, and play the game. Well, Pete has played the game brilliantly for PA. He can be proud of his achievements. And I'm sure that all of us are proud to have had Pete as a colleague and a friend. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Wood. <laughs> Jonathan's run is going to be banned from all uh, leading dudes from now on because he's, he's just too hard an act to follow. <laughs> what can you possibly say after such a brilliant speech? I, I didn't recognise myself from it at all, I should add. But uh, it was a, a very warm tribute. Thank you very much, Jonathan. And uh, I have very few words to say because what can you say after a speech like that? Um, one thing I would like to say is that um, it's been... An absolute pleasure and privilege to be at PA. Uh, I've been here for 36 years, 20 here at, uh, I say here, over there, 20 at Victoria, and 16 at uh, Fleet Street. I started on March the 5th, 1979. I've probably written something like about 15 million words for PA, <laughs> and about 40 million. 14 million of them probably had to be rewritten by the sun. <laughs> people, well, people were kind enough to actually talk about this as being the end of an era, but I think some of the people who had to sub some of my stuff might describe it as the end of an era. <laughs> actually, I promised my wife I wasn't going to tell that. <laughs> Actually, that um, when I first started, when we had copy takers, we had a belt that went around like the old sweet shop things you used to see when you were a small child, and uh, somebody was once sick in the belt at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and the top was accompanied by this rather strange stuff that was going around. It was pretty disgusting. It was really important to have snaps in those days. All the copy was written on what looked like sort of white bolt paper. And, and the, the, the clever stuff, the snaps and the snap four, were done on yellow paper. In fact, if you were down at the pub, you'd come back and you'd, they'd say, oh, yellow paper, orange paper, whatever it was, it meant there was a big story. But invariably, the really big stories got stuck in this belt. <laughs> and they had some phonist guy who had to sort of fish it out. It'd always be the most important stuff. And, I mean, it's, it was archaic. When they introduced mobile phones, for example, they, they, they resembled sort of bricks. <laughs> These massive great things you have to cart around. Uh, my struggle with IT has been truly epic. I would like to say that people have been enormously patient. Uh, Kevin's not here tonight, he's been wonderful. Uh, Martin Landy, who's the latest bloke, endlessly patient with my ridiculous request. How does this work? How do you do that? How, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do actually now. I've actually not got all the IT guys to, to help me. Um, one thing that has puzzled me, I, I started off at PA and I, I now find that, and I do quote here, I now find that I'm working for an organisation that is the leading provider of multi-platform content solutions. <laughs> And I'm, I'm, I, can, I can just about understand what this means as a transport correspondent, because it does contain the word platform. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> I, I, should add that um, I should add that my speech tonight, there will be no graphics. Uh, <laughs> there will be no fact file. Uh, there will be no Q&A. There will be no panel. I did my last panel quarter to three this afternoon. Um, and uh, and there will, I think there will be no filming, but um, I'm not sure Mr. Jones will be around taking lots of pictures. Anyway, I'm not going to go on very much longer because there's plenty of drinking time to go on. I want to say, first of all, thank you very much indeed for all of you for coming. It's been great seeing so many people. One or two people I haven't seen for a long time, and it's absolutely been absolutely fabulous. Uh, I'm not going to thank loads of people because it sounds like an Oscar speech and I'm going to finish very shortly. All I can say is it's been a real pleasure and a real privilege and thank you very much indeed. <laughs>
we've got time for them. Yeah. <laughs> so, Peter, um, here are your presents. Do you want to start with that one? Well, that's absolutely fantastic. I've got a bat. <laughs> I suppose it's a cricketer is a, is a start. <laughs> if anybody who hasn't signed the cricket bat would like to sign the cricket bat, it will be around. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely fabulous. Right, let's. Oh, hang on, my bat. says here, the train has always been called the 857, yeah. but nobody can remember why. <laughs> yeah. Is there one, one, Em's just getting these things out, I keep remembering things I was supposed to be telling you about, but one thing I would like to say is that uh, one thing I will not miss is the fact that, uh, and you're going to really miss this yourselves, is that I've, had, I've come to realise early in the years, <laughs> as a transport correspondent, that everybody who has a plane delayed, their train doesn't run in the morning, their tube is up the spout, they got stuck on the motorway. I've had to remember, at the end of the day, it's all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> and they can, uh, you know, they, 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 they send me stuff. So, uh, you notice they've also sent it to the news desk. You know, oh God, I have the right side. <laughs> Yeah, there's about 20 alerts, so hang on, I'm bloody underground, you know. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> well, we can let you leave without anything. <laughs> I'm mean, getting mad to do something, just remember something. Oh, now... Now, which one are you, Peter? Yeah, now, this, this is the famous picture of all the uh, young... <laughs> There's a huge bloke in the front, and he's surrounded by what must be about 50 young PA apprentices or champs, basically. And people have said, which one are you? And I said, I've lost weight since then. <laughs> right, lovely. That's a, that's a lovely, lovely present. Thank you very much. Oh. And this is just for you to be able to uh, supply your cricket and tennis and everything else. Right, now this is a, a sports, sports director gift back for a large summer money, so thank you for being so generous. Thank you very much indeed. So, and one last thing. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely the end of the speeches. <laughs>